G'day guys. Car A travels at a constant speed of 10 meters per second. Car B accelerates around the curve at 1 meter per second squared, and has a speed of 20 meters per second in the position shown. Find the acceleration of A relative to B. So what's happening here? We've got car A which is traveling around this circular path at a constant speed, and we have car B on the same circular path that's accelerating tangentially, so it's getting faster and faster and faster. And at the positions shown, we're asked to find the acceleration of A from the perspective of the driver of B. Okay? So the first thing you want to do here to start off this problem is quote the relative acceleration formula, which states that the acceleration of A is equal to the acceleration of B plus the acceleration of A relative to B. That's a plus sign just there. It's a plus sign. Okay? All right, well, let's start by finding out what the acceleration of A is first. We know it's in this position, so let me just um, quickly draw it here. This is car A. Now, because it's going around a circular path, that means there will be an acceleration in the normal direction. I'll call that the acceleration of A in the normal direction. Notice, because it's traveling at a constant speed, at a constant speed, there's no acceleration in the tangential direction. So in fact, we can say the acceleration of A in the normal direction is equal to V squared on R. This is a circular motion formula, which in this context is 100, which in this context is 10 squared. I won't jump too many steps. It's 10 squared divided by 100, which is going to be 1, right? So the acceleration of your blue car, car A, is 1 meter per second squared in this direction. Now let's talk about car B. It's a little bit more complicated. This is our car just here. This is our car. Now, of course, we also have a normal acceleration. I'll call that A, B, N, the acceleration of car B in the normal direction. But we also have another acceleration tangentially, which is given as one meter per second squared. That's A, B, T, right? And we can tell that a, B, N is going to be equal to V squared on R. But in this context, it's going to be 20 squared divided by 100, right? Which is going to be 400 divided by 100, which is 4, right? Now, we know that A, B, T is equal to 1. That's simply provided, okay? Now, you might be thinking, well, whew, how do we even find A, B if, we've, if it's got two components? Well, what you need to do is you need to use Pythagoras' theorem. So... If, 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 you, if you were to draw the combined vector, it would look like this. This is your combined vector AB. This is AB just here, AB, right? And it will have a component of one in the horizontal and a component of four meters per second squared in the vertical, right? And so this is AB right here. This is AB, it's, it's, it's at a slant like this. Now what slant is it at? Well, let's define an angle here theta and find out what theta is. We know that tan theta, we know that tan theta is going to be equal to opposite over adjacent, which is four divided by one, which means that we know theta is going to be equal to 76 degrees, 76 degrees. So that's what theta is equal to. Now let's see what can we, what is what is the magnitude of AB? So what is the length of this vector? Well, we can use that. We can use Pythagoras' theorem to figure that out. We know that. Um, let's see how can I make some space. Let me make some. We know that. AB, that's the length of this vector, is going to be equal to the square root of 4 squared plus 1 squared. That's just Pythagoras, right? Which is going to be equal to the square root of 17, which is 4.1. Okay, so we've got AB, and we know its angle it's at. And we, and we know um, the acceleration of A, it's just 1, and it's at 60 degrees from the horizontal, just here, right? So now we're ready to start with this just here. Let me actually make, let me draw both of these vectors connected to each other in a really large picture so we've got a better understanding of how to apply this. This is going to be the acceleration, the acceleration of A right here. It's going to be 60 degrees from the horizontal, just here. This is 60 degrees. And of course, it's got a magnitude of one, which we just calculated. This is just the acceleration. This is just the acceleration of A, right? Now let's draw the acceleration of B on the same diagram. Well, we know it's got a steeper incline. This is 76 degrees, so it's going to look like that. It's going to be slightly steeper, right? And this has a magnitude of 4.1. So this is the acceleration of B. That's all we've done. So far, I'm just drawing both vectors on the same vector plot. 
the point of doing this is so that we can graphically figure out what the acceleration of a relative to b is. And we do that by using vector addition. We know that ab plus whatever this pink vector is must meet up with aa. So we know that this vector that completes this triangle is the acceleration of a relative to b, right? I should, I should really stop here and tell you that if you're uncomfortable with this whole idea of drawing triangles from vector plots, then if you wanted to, you could solve for the acceleration of A and acceleration of B in terms of I and J components, and then solve this analytically through a whole bunch of simultaneous equations, if you wanted to. I'm gonna use this graphical method because I think it's a little bit more intuitive. Okay, well, now we've managed to reduce the problem down to a, a, a problem of finding the sides of triangles, which we can use using trigonometry. So let me define an angle here, gamma, just here. And let me define an angle, let me get rid of this. Let me define an angle here, which I will call um, beta, right? And our job will be to figure out gamma and beta so that we can find the length of this. But to do that, and I know I must be darting all over the place, but please catch up with me. Um, we're gonna have to invoke something use, using the cosine, cosine rule, cosine rule. And this is what the cosine rule is. It says that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of a, right? And we're gonna use something called the sine rule, which states that sine of a divided by a is equal to sine of b divided by b where lowercase a, b, and c are the sides of your triangles and capitals a, b's, and c's are the internal angles of your triangles. If, if, if this formula or if these formulas look a little bit confusing, I strongly recommend just using Wikipedia to look up where they come from. Okay, so let's, let's first find out what this internal angle is gamma. Well, let me get rid of gamma real quick. We know that this angle here is gonna be equal to 60 degrees. Right? And we know that this, and that's because you can construct a right angle triangle here to prove that. And we also know that this angle here is going to be 76 degrees. This is going to be 76 degrees. We just calculated that from theta, right? And of course, we can construct a vertical line here. We know this is a right angle, which means that we know that this angle here is going to be 90 minus 76, which is 14 degrees. Okay, so now we can find gamma by summing up these angles just here we can say that gamma, and let me draw it in pink, gamma is gonna be equal to 60 plus 90, so that's 60 plus 90 plus 14. And that's gonna be equal to, let's see, 150, 164. That's gonna be 164 degrees. Okay, let me resize this to make some space. So I'm gonna move this a little bit over here. Okay, so now we're ready to use the cosine rule, and we can say that, and I'm just gonna be quoting this formula all along, we can say that the magnitude of this side of this triangle, which is the acceleration of A relative to B without the vector on top, is gonna to be e squared, is gonna be equal to, let's see, let's, let's make this side B, that's gonna be 4.1 squared plus one squared minus two, times by what's what's b well we said that was this side which is 4.1 4.1 times by c which is this side so that's of magnitude of 1 times by cosine a which is cosine of gamma in this case if you were to apply the um the cosine rule correctly so that's going to be cosine of gamma okay and if you were to plug in and solve this using your calculator you would get a, A, B is equal to 5.1 meters per second squared. So this right here is the magnitude of your acceleration of A relative to B. But don't forget, we're not done here because we're asked to find the acceleration of A relative to B. Acceleration is a vector. So we also need to find its direction. We know it's, we know it's in this direction, but we need to quantify that by specifying an angle. That's why we need to find beta just here. So we can find beta using the sine rule, right? I didn't just 
write this for no reason. We, we can find beta using the sine rule and that's gonna be, in this context, let's use these two angles and these two. So it's gonna be um, sine gamma divided by its opposite length, which is gonna be uh, a, a, b is gonna be equal to sine beta divided by its opposite length, which was 4.1. Right, and we found AAB, it's just 5.1. And when you solve this, you're left with beta is gonna be equal to 12.8 degrees. So that's this angle just here. So in fact, where our final answer to this problem is, the acceleration of A relative to B, the vector is gonna be equal to 5.1 meters per second squared in this angle, which is going to be 12.8 plus 60, which is going to be 72.8 degrees from the horizontal. That's our answer. So let's box this off. That's our answer. Okay. So notice it's a vector. So we've given a magnitude and a direction. If you're uncomfortable providing an answer like this, like you don't want to find out in terms of angles, then feel free to deconstruct this in terms of I and J and give your answer in terms of I and J. You should get full marks for that too. Okay, guys, that's this problem done. Cheers.